What Spectator is, is a wideband multi-channel audio system, meaning that we can have, instead of using a traditional carrier of 200 kilohertz, we're using a carrier that's 800, uh, 8 meg wide. Okay? That 8 meg carrier allows us to do two things. Firstly, you can fit in a lot more data into that bandwidth. The restrictions of 200 kilohertz is you don't get very much data in that, now that we're all digital RF, right? So in order to improve that, or to get higher quality, or to get bigger channel counts, we're opening an 8 megahertz window. Now within that 8 megahertz window, I can distribute in time slots using a TDMA architecture, I can have up to 64 audio links. Technically 128, but the capacity is restricted by the Dante card, because you can only have 64 out in the Dante, okay? Um, so that out of those 64 audio links, I can then scale what type of audio link that I have. I can improve the latency, I can improve the audio quality, so going right down from um, 48K up to 96K, 24-bit, PCM audio even, uh, with latencies that vary between 0.7 milliseconds up to 15 milliseconds. This means, and it's not the complete system that you scale, it's pack by pack. So you imagine you would have 64 of these packs, okay? which is bi-directional, so you have both an input and an output, so you then allocate the time slots based on the requirement of the person that's using it. One day it might just be a dedicated in-ear monitoring system, the next day it might be an instrument that's plugged into there with an in-ear monitoring system, maybe it's a lav mic and an IFB for a broadcast situation. It's all, all very, very flexible in terms of the scale, right? You can even use it as a fold back for text, backline text, let's say, right? Maybe you've got a couple of texts on in ears. They don't need to have high resolution. You can then just change that to lowest quality, highest latency, right? If we take a look at the software, before I go through the software, I'll go through the hardware first, right? Here's our antenna, okay? This antenna has a transceiver built onto it. There's no RF component here. The RF is all done here. So at that point, we've already converted the RF back into standard data, okay? means we can have a data port here. We do not have coax cables, we don't have to calculate cable losses, we don't have to put boosters on. Standard network cable running from here to here. So if you're using decent Cat6 cable, 100 meters. We have even converted to fiber and ran four kilometers, five kilometers. It's fine. What you cannot do is have any kind of switch infrastructure in between. This is layer one only, okay? Because the switch introduces too much latency, all right? The point to point needs to be quick. We can't have any latency in between. Yeah, but so. four, four kilometers is... Four, four, yeah, four, four kilometers over fiber is, is, is pretty good. It's decent, we've tested it, it works. Yes, and I know there's still a travel time for the light, right? Of course there is. But that is nowhere near two milliseconds. Yeah. Nowhere near, okay? Um, you can have up to four of those antennas connected here. And you decide what you want to do with those antennas. Do you want to have the antenna one being in one frequency range and antenna two being in a different frequency range? You can do this, or you can have two in one, three in one. I like to keep one just for scanning. You can continually scan the air. Show you here. So if I look at the frequency scan that we did earlier, I've got one antenna that's just continually doing this. Every couple of seconds it'll do a sweep, it'll do a sweep, okay? We are operating here. You see it's an 8 meg window. This is a standard wireless microphone carrier here. It's a 200 kilohertz carrier. That's an 8 meg carrier where we're operating. It's a TV channel, that's a TV channel. Same, same with, uh, as, as a TV channel, okay? And I can have two of those open per, per, per station, per system, okay? Take a look at the, um, the rest of the base station. Word clock, obviously, for synchronization to, to a master clock or a mixing console or whatever you're using as your clock. There's a control port for running the software. Two different options on the software, either an app, which is called LinkDesk, or I'm running the, the web browser, which is a browser-based, gives you pretty much the same control, slightly different look and interface. My preference is this, it just suits me more visibly, it's quicker to access, quicker to see. Okay? Also, uh, here we have uh, cascade ports. These cascade ports aren't active yet. We still haven't decided what we're cascading to and what, the, what, what data should be cascaded. Okay? Do we cascade to another base station for redundancy or increasing of capacity? Or do we just cascade to another antenna breakout device? Who knows? This will be market driven, okay? It'll be, be customers like yourselves that come back to us saying, well, we've used it this way, we would like to do it this. Is it possible that you can do that through the cascade port? 
and maybe if we get enough requests like that, we'll say, okay, fine, it's a feature that we can build into it. Uh, obviously, Dante, primary and secondary Dante on board. There are also two slots. At the moment, I'm running a MADI card, so MADI over fiber and MADI over coax here. But these slots, you can take the cards out. Maybe in the future we have an AVB card. Maybe in the future we have an AES67 card. Who knows? Again, this will be market driven. It'll be, can we have a slot or a, a slot in card for whatever protocol that you want to you transport your, 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 your audio on? Okay. Now let's get you on to listen to it. An antenna two on 474. That's the center frequency. I can then decide on the bandwidth based on which country I'm in. In Europe, in ITU region one, eight megahertz is fine. In the US, it has to be six megahertz by law. Oh, really? Are you broke, broke it? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine, I'll resynchronize it. it. Yeah. I'll resync it in a second. We are good at that. Thank we, you for that. We yeah. use a little <laughs> things. Yeah. You can also increase or decrease the RF power depending on the, the size of the coverage area that you want to do. There isn't a huge amount of difference in this, in my opinion. And then here you can dedicate which antenna is doing what. So I want RF channel one on that particular antenna. And then on my D antenna, I want it to scan, for example. And you can then pick whatever you want those four antennas to do. You can then imagine that if you're using one base station with four antennas, you could be doing a festival from one device. You've got 64 audio link possibilities here. So if you've got four stages at festival, one antenna, one antenna, one antenna, one antenna, all coming to the same base station, you then distribute the audio based on, okay, Dante channels one through 16 is stage one, send that to mixing console one. Similarly, stage two, 30, uh, 17 to 32, you then send those to mixing console two, and so on and so on. So your resource requirement has reduced dramatically in terms of physical hardware. One U, basically, and you've got a 64 channel system that you can split up into four different systems, technically, if, if, if you want to. So the broadcast industry are going to love this because always they've got multiple studios in each of their facilities doing different content at the same time. You just put this in a centralized knock or engineering room and distribute the audio the way that, that you need it on a day-by-day -day basis. 